Hello guys, welcome back to the Eat Like Ruby podcast. I am back in studio today with a guest, Coach Jack. Hello. Hey guys, thanks <laughs> for having me back. I never know how to intro people. It's just like, you're here. Let's do it. Shaq is back. Oh, that's what we could call the episode. Shaq is back. (laughs) Shaq is back. (laughs) It's going to be a great episode by the sounds of it. So Shaq is back today and we did the Instagram Q&A box. So I put on Instagram like who's got questions or topics or anything for the podcast. And we got heaps and heaps of questions, which is really cool. We're going to split it into two parts because we got a lot of like nutrition training sort of factual science tangible questions and then we got more kind of like lifestyle mindset that kind of vibe they're just a bit different so I thought it'd be cool to split it in two and because otherwise it'd be one really long episode anyway because no doubt we'll ramble about everything you will (laughs) yeah Shaq's like why am I here (laughs) three hours later (laughs) so Shaq's gonna read them out we got a lot of the same question just in like different ways so um hopefully like I feel like we're going to be able to answer all of them or like most of them and maybe not exactly the way you worded it but it's like five people ask the same thing does that make sense yeah yeah so we'll do the um the more factual nutrition training stuff first and we'll just see where it takes us we're jumping in yeah hit me with the first one and yeah we can it's my my opinion and your opinion okay if you've got one, you're probably like, I don't care. <laughs> okay, the first one off the bat. How to add calories without feeling full? Is that the first question? Yeah. Straight off the bloody bat. How to add calories without feeling full? This is a good question and it's super common. I don't know if we've spoken much about this on the potty, but any time someone is in a deficit, they're sort of like, I can't wait to eat more. And I would honestly bet my life... Any single client that I've ever put on like, say, 2,200 calories or more at some point has said to me like, I'm full and this is hard. And it's like every person thinks they want to like, you know, quote, eat all the foods. And as soon as you actually intentionally have a high calorie intake, people struggle so much more than they think they would. What would your advice be to, um, how, how did they word it? What did they say? How to add calories without feeling full. Yeah. If you don't have any input, you don't have to. That's fine. Yeah, I got nothing else out of that. It's, just, it's hard, like. <laughs> thanks for stopping by, Shaq. Yeah, thanks. Well, like, it's hard, like, like you said, you add the more meals, you're gonna feel way more fuller. Like, in my benefit, my like opinion. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I've been in a, a surplus, add more food, add more like density, you're gonna feel like yeah. Well, yeah. Let's just um, point out as well that like a surplus for Shaq is about four and a half thousand calories. So. <laughs> Yeah, we cannot complain about feeling full on 2200. <laughs> no, but one thing I see here and it's so worth looking at is two things actually, I would say. So often people are really used to sticking with like their like diet foods and their low calorie foods. So even when we think about that, like spud lights or, you know, people add like zucchini and stuff to oats to like bulk up the oats. So, so often I've seen people come out of a deficit, go into high calories and carry all those foods with them. And it's like, if you're still in a diet mindset and you're literally like bulking up every meal, of course you're going to feel full. Like if you've got, say you're in a deficit and it's 1500 calories and you've bulked up your oats and you've got all the fruit and veggies and then you're loading up your day with spud light and then you have jelly light and then people use like all of those sugar-free toppings and all those things. If you carry all those foods into your higher calorie days, like you're probably going to plan your day and it's still going to be like 15 or 1600 calories because you've been planning big days on those foods anyway. And then you add 600 calories to that. Like it's a fuck fight. So if you're going to intentionally move away from low calories, you want to start looking at those foods. Like perfect example is the spud light. Like just go to normal potatoes. Or if you're like bulking up your oats with zucchini, Take out the friggin' zucchini, add some more oats. (laughs) Like start there. But then the other thing too is often people are, you know, I don't know if we'd say scared, but there is some like underlying thing where they don't want to actually start including, you know, quote, bad foods. If you are trying to eat like, I'd say if you're trying to eat over 2000 calories of all like clean, healthy foods, if we want to call them that, it's going to be hard. Yeah. Agreed. (laughs) 
I was waiting for a bit more. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to, I was just letting you get a word in. <laughs> the first one. <laughs> no, but honestly, if we do that, and if we think about this, this is a really perfect example. When I am like low calorie dieting for fat loss, when I have my like yogurt bowl that I have in the mornings, I'll go Yo Pro yogurt, strawberries, because they're super low cal fruit and cereal. When I'm not dieting for fat loss, I straight away sub out the Yo Pro for Chobani and it's not that much difference, but it's probably like 50 to 100 cals difference. Yeah. Sub out the strawberries for a, a higher calorie fruit. And again, it's probably like 50 cals there. Add the Nutella, which is about 150 cals. But if we look at that, the volume and like how filling that meal is, is pretty much exactly the same. You've got the same amount of yogurt, same amount of fruit, same amount of cereal, and you've added a blob of Nutella. That's hardly going to fill you up. Yeah. Like on top of that meal. But like I said, if each one of those little changes brings in 50 to 100 calories your meal is suddenly 200 calories more. Yeah. So it's really worth looking at your meals and just looking like, where am I sticking with the low calorie light options? And literally, if you plan your day, like let's say you're used to planning days of 1600 calories and now you're on 1900, plan your usual day and eat three Tim Tams. Yeah. Like seriously. And the funny thing is people are like, people will say to me, quote, I can't eat that much. And it's like, I bet you if we put a cheese platter down on a Saturday night, I bet you could fucking oh, eat 3,000 calories. It's gone in like two seconds. A hundred percent. So that's where we need to look. People really do. And it's, it's not a, I'm not having a dig because people genuinely believe like, I can't eat that much. But usually it's like, I can't eat that much on a Monday when I'm trying to be clean and healthy and good. And it's like, if we can drop that little bit of a mindset and literally, like I said, still plan all your usual foods and meals, tick all the boxes, chuck a chocolate bar on there for 300 cows. It's mm. not, you're not suddenly going to be like, shit, I'm so full <laughs> from that one chocolate bar. Yeah. So really just have a look. There's so many easy ways to add calories. And this is coming from people that ate 8,000 calories the other day in our attempt to eat 10,000. Exactly. <laughs> you just have to look at where can I chuck in little things that aren't big, like bulky filling things. Yeah. yeah. That's when it comes into it, the chocolate bar after training. <laughs> Shit, we're, we're back here. <laughs> Mindset. Next. Next one. I'd say we've ticked that one off. Blow past the chocolate bar. Right. Oh. Thought on meal timing. When is the best to eat meals during the day? Yeah, this is a cool question. And one thing I love to point out straight away is whenever we word something like when when is best to eat meals, is that what it said? Yeah. We've got to think about the context. So best for what? Are we training? Are we not training? If someone's running a marathon, there's going to be best times for them to eat. If somebody's sitting on the couch all day, there's going to be best times for them to eat. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. that's the first thing I always just want people to open their minds a little bit. Like we get stuck in this thinking of like, what is best? And it's going to be different depending on the individual, the goal, so many factors. Yeah. Know what I mean? Um, I feel like this is one that I'm going to answer again because you're not going to have much to say about this. What is best is not eating a chocolate bar before or after training. (laughs) Bullshit. (laughs) (laughs) No, but when someone asks this, often they usually they're meaning for fat loss. Let's assume this person is meaning for fat loss or even just for like optimal body composition. Yeah. Right. Like when is, is meal timing important? That's an often a question that people will ask is meal timing important. Not really is what I'll say. It's not a big factor. So we know that like energy balance calories in calories out is going to be the deciding factor. We know that certain nutrients like protein, fiber, whatever are going to help with that. Meal timing is way down the bottom of that list. It will not be a deciding factor on whether you can achieve fat loss or muscle gain or not. So long as you end the day like with the right amount of calories you need for that goal, with the right amount of protein, tick all the boxes, when you ate those meals is not going to be a deciding factor. Yeah. So pretty much solely depends on the person itself. Like to me and you, we're going to eat different meals different times of day. Like there's always going to be a difference. Yeah. Yeah. The only um, thing that I would say and one thing that I push with my girls, um, this is not even me having a dig, but is the pre and post training. So when we look at like, when is the best time to eat? I am a big advocate of pre-training nutrition. The, the studies, the research, there's too much research to suggest that we should be sloppy with this. Like we should be having good pre-training meals. So a good high carb and or like add some protein 
but especially like simple, easy to digest carbohydrates before training. That's one thing if we're looking at meal timing, I would say to get that in and then to get some form of protein and ideally carbs as well, like the two hour window after training. That's yeah. one thing I really push with my girls. But then when we eat the rest of the day is totally on you. If you like to have two massive meals, like if your calories were 1800 and you want to have two 900 calorie meals, go for it. If you want to divvy that up into like six, 300 calorie meals, go for it. If at the end of the day, you're still going to tick all the boxes of the foods we want to include and hit your calorie goal, it's going to have the same outcome, same effect. There's absolutely no (laughs) truth to don't eat late at night, don't eat carbs at night, don't eat after a certain time. None of that is true. Like that's, that's a whole nother topic. I feel like I could just rant and rave about that, but I'm just going to stop there and say I never ever in my 12 years as a nutrition and training educator have told anyone to stop eating at a certain time of night and I've personally never stopped eating at a certain time at night yeah okay been in maintenance slash surplus for eight months and now pushed hard for eight months and pushed hard what is the best way to approach a three months deficit 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 that's a one been at maintenance slash surplus for eight months. Eight months, pushed hard. That is really cool. First of all, can we just acknowledge that? That's solid. Eight months, just pushing the gains. Yeah, that's solid. Love that. Big yes from me. What is the best way to push a three-month deficit? Is that what it said? Yeah. Um, that's really cool. I love that. I think that's a cool question. And there's no... Right or wrong? Well, yeah. There's no um, best way... Yeah. I wonder what they're really sort of asking, like what they're, what they're confused about. But the one thing I would say if you're in that position, first of all, like I said, solid effort. I love that. The one thing that I always want to advise my girls to think about is make sure it is a good time for you to go into a deficit. And if we look at the science and the facts and, you know, we rant and rave about spending time out of a deficit, this person's obviously done that. That's awesome. Um, So that's not what I mean. But if you're going to say like, okay, yep, I'm going to go hard on a strict deficit for three months, you want to make sure the rest of your life looks good to do so. Think about like when I've, I've done fat loss every year from sort of like July through to like October, every year for the last three or four years. I don't even budge. Nothing could get in the way. Like you could put me in a chocolate fountain and I would not even dip my finger in it. Like when it's on, it's on for me. (laughs) And so if this person, like somebody spending eight months in a gaining phase, I would think they're pretty keen on nutrition and training, which is awesome. So you want that deficit to be so effective. So I would just make sure you're not trying to do that. And then looking at your schedule and being like, I've got 17 birthdays and a five week holiday during that time. You know what I mean? Or I've got like a big study exam. I've got a big move, like moving house is a massive one. That's so shit when you're trying to diet. So really just looking and being like, can I commit to this three months for the most part? Like you don't want to be like, Oh, I've got one birthday in week seven. Can't do it. Yeah. (laughs) But you want to just make sure like if you're going to knuckle down and go for it and only spend three months in a deficit, which is awesome. Just make sure like schedule's clear, life's good. You can just go for it. Even the other thing too, and it's cool that Shaq's here is like, I communicate that so much with Shaq when it's the time for me. So often we see people that will be like, you know, my partner doesn't get it or it's really hard because my partner does X, Y, Z. And one thing I always want to say to people in that position is like, have you actually like really communicated to your partner what you're doing and why? Yeah. And like why it's so important to you. Because often what can happen here is, and we're so off topic to this chick's question, <laughs> but I think this is really important to talk about. So often we think about our own diet all the time. Like if you're into nutrition and training or flexible dieting or whatever, you're thinking about your diet, you're planning your days, you're shopping, you're looking up recipes. It's so prominent in your mind. But you then just assume that the people around you are as invested and they get it as much as you get it. And they probably don't. And the other little thing there is, especially when we're flexible dieting, it's like you might be having Nutella, you might be having ice cream, whatever, as part of your planned day. Your partner then sees you eating those things and is like, well, we eat these things. That's fine. Like I'll go out and get pizza. Then they come home with pizza and you're like, I'm on a fucking diet. And they're like, well, 
you were just having to tell her an ice cream. Like, I don't even know what's going on here. (laughs) So I think it's so important to let the, like the people that are, you know, in your close proximity, like if you live with them or really good friends or work people, whatever you decide, like let them know what you're doing, how they can help, what you're actually doing. Like I'm eating X, Y, Z. I'm actually not going to eat out. Like I always say to Shaq when I'm in a diet, instead of us getting takeaway on Friday nights, like let's do homemade pizzas. You can put whatever the fuck you want on it. I don't care, but I'll be controlling mine and just really communicating instead of, I see so often like girls getting into that position where they're like annoyed and they're like aggravated. They're like, my partner doesn't get it. And it's like, have you actually sat down with them and communicated what you're doing and why it's important to you? I think we don't do that. And then in the heat of the moment, we escalate and it's like, I'm on a fucking diet and you don't support me and whatever. (laughs) But it's like, have you actually communicated to them before it gets to that point? Yeah. Know what I mean? Like, imagine if I did that, I just didn't really tell you what I was doing and then you walk in with Easter eggs or whatever and then I'm just kicking off and you're like, oh, she fucking eats Nutella every day. Like, I didn't know we, you know, suddenly, quote, not allowed to have Easter eggs. Like, it's just, it's just tricky. So, you've got to just make sure that, coming back to the question, (laughs) just make sure that personally, like, you look at your own schedule, your lifestyle, everything's good to go for it. And then just make sure you're actually setting yourself up for success. Like, let your partner know, let your family know, let your, you know, if you've got like a work bestie that you talk about diets and that with like get people on your team don't you know just assume that everybody gets it mm. like honestly like, stick a plan and stick with it and like make sure you got the <laughs> team around you to help you get that goal like yeah coach shark yeah with the advice give me a follow <laughs> everybody give shark a follow yeah. is it coach underscore shack yeah <laughs> well look how many followers you have and then we'll <laughs> look after this comes out And if you get none, well, maybe no one's listening. Thanks. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Shaq looks genuinely puzzled before he reads them all. (laughs) Just reading it first. (laughs) Okay. How many grams of fiber should we eat? Is it calculated on body weight or another equation? Yeah. Good question. I love this. So I personally, I think I say good question. I love this about every question. You do. (laughs) I usually aim for eight grams every 500 calories. Why? That's just like, Shark, why? Yeah. <laughs> Explain yourself. Yeah. Explain yourself for the listeners. <laughs> Shark's just out here for the listeners. That's just good, like what, you know, studies tell us and everything is a good amount. And it's give or take, like we always have um, like minimums or ranges or whatever. It doesn't have to be like to the gram. But usually if we go eight grams per 500 cals, so if we think about like a 1500 calorie day, that's 24 grams of fiber. Usually I will say to my girls to be five grams either side of the target. So whatever target they get, let's say the target was 24. If you could be five grams either side of that, so let's say like 20 to 30. Yeah. That's good. That's what I advise. Some people will naturally just eat more fiber. Like some people just with their food choices, it'll just rack up a bit. Eating more is totally fine. So long as you feel fine. If you're somebody that's getting a lot of fiber, like often girls will speak up in my Facebook group and just be like, oh, my fiber is actually way more than my target. Like, is this a bad thing? And it's like, so long as we're not like bloating, so long as digestion is good, like you're regular, there's no issues there. You might just be a person that is comfortable eating more. But if you're somebody who notices that their fiber is higher than like the averages and the targets that we set, and you're often like uncomfortable, bloated, really heavy, like I would have a look at that and see if you need to scale it back a little bit. But um, more is definitely not bad so long as you're feeling good. Yeah. But you want to be, you don't want to be less. Don't get, I think I spoke about this. Oh, I actually spoke about this on the episode with mum, which has not come out yet. But um, often some people can get into the mindset of like, don't want to waste my calories on fiber yeah. and they want to just eat a bunch of other crap. Don't do that. Yeah. Wait, wait for the episode with mum. We talk about that. Okay. I was <laughs> <ask> <laughs> when aiming to lose weight, how long should you be in a dis- deficit? deficit before moving to a maintenance? People always struggle to say the word deficit all mm. the time. It doesn't look right. Like it looks, yeah. 
Now when you look at words, like, okay, that's that. But it doesn't, yeah. <laughs> this is brilliant. <laughs> Honestly, I can't be the only one. No, you're not. That's what I'm saying. People often mess, not mess that up, but like kind of hesitate when look, they say it. Yeah, it doesn't look right. Like That is so funny. <laughs> yeah, honestly. <laughs> okay, so how long, what did it say when aiming to lose weight? Know, I'm all lost now. Same. I'm all flustered. <laughs> okay, well, what one is it? When aiming to lose weight, I think you said. Yeah. So when aiming to lose weight, how long should you be in a de- deficit before moving to a maintenance? Yeah, good question again. Um, and it'll depend on the individual. And I think I even spoke about this in the episode with Soph. So obviously if somebody has 30 kilos to lose, it's going to be different than someone who has five kilos to lose. So the number one thing I would say here is get down to a healthy weight range first. Like don't think about maintenance. Don't think about a gaining phase. Don't think about anything until you are in a healthy weight range. There's actually nothing more important than being in a fucking healthy weight range. So that should be everybody's number one priority. Yeah. We do not want to carry excess body fat any more often or any longer than we need to. Yeah. Like we want to be healthy. So if you're someone who is not in that range for your like own, you know, gender, height, all of those things, like that should be the first thing. Get down to that. And then from there, what did they say? Like, how long should we... Yeah, how long should you be in a deficit before moving to a maintenance? Yep. If you are someone who is in that healthy weight range and you're just wanting to get like a bit lighter, a bit leaner, like you're wanting to just push it that bit further, we say anywhere from like, oh, it's so hard to say. I would say like 16 weeks, give or take. If, if you're in a healthy weight range you should not need to spend more than 16 weeks in a deficit to get in wicked shape. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. So, and often when we get to anywhere from sort of like the eight to 12 week mark is when we would want to start to assess that. And if somebody is like, oh, I actually do have a bit more to lose, like things are good, I want to keep pushing this. That's where we would look at like a diet break. So a diet break being like two weeks where we just – go to back to our maintenance calories for that short two week period to relieve like the physical stress of a deficit, give the mindset a break, like just kind of chill and literally have a break from your diet without blowing out your diet yeah. um, for two weeks. And then you might come back in and do like another four or six weeks or something. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So like in summary for that question, I would say stay like be in a deficit or focus on weight loss until you are in a healthy weight range. And then once you're there, you're looking at sort of a two to four month deficit depending on how hard you want to push it, how much you want to lose. Do you have diet breaks in between? All of those things. Yeah. What's the less like deficit you would put someone on? Like is like that the like, smallest. Yeah. Like is there any window saying like two weeks is not enough time, four weeks is not enough time? Like what's well, your Well, even minimum? in that, when we think about that, like not enough time for what? What if someone only had one kilo to lose? Yeah, okay, fair enough. So that's where we always just want to look like we sort of like, what's best, what's worth, what's right, what's wrong. There's so much context there. Sometimes we do what we call a mini cut. So if a person is like, let's say myself, for example, right now, I'm like around the 62 kilo mark or whatever. If I was like, oh, I want to get back to 60, I don't need a four month strict fat loss phase to lose two kilos. Like it actually doesn't make sense. So when we do a mini cut, it is literally just that. It's like a mini time where we're cutting weight. So usually I only do this for girls that have had successful deficits in the past. We know what works for them. We know that they're good at it. Like they're into nutrition and training. I know if I say like mini cut, ready, set, go, they're going to go, they're going to nail it. You don't want to go into a deficit and fuck around. We've spoken about that so much on the podcast, whether that's a four month deficit, whether it's a three week mini cut, whatever, you don't want to go into a deficit go through all the shit things of a deficit, have random meals here and there that pull you out of it and have nothing to show for it. So coming back to the mini cut, like I said, I'd only do that for girls that I know would adhere to it. And we've got a fair bit of like data and evidence about what an effective deficit is for you because we don't want to spend two or three weeks trying to work that out. If you're working with someone for the first time and it's like go into a deficit, nail it for two or three weeks, oh, didn't get the result we want. We're going to have to adjust calories, whatever. 
this is no longer a mini cut because we're three weeks in and we haven't really moved. Yeah. So when you've already done that previously with someone and you've got all that info, you can just be like, oh, yep, you know, I'm sitting a couple of kilos heavier than I want. Maybe I've got a holiday coming up or something. Would love to just tighten things up. Yep. Okay, cool. Let's drop straight back to that deficit. We know it works for you. We're putting the time frame in place right now. It's four weeks. Nail it. Say no to the pizza. Say no to going out for dinner. Let your partner know what's up. Ready, set, go. Four weeks. Yeah. And it's going to be different for everyone. Like if somebody is heavier and they've got the weight to lose, if somebody's, you know, we do this with girls that are 55 kilos already. So they're not going to lose a kilo a week. Like they don't have it to lose. But it's just about like, literally, like I said, tightening things up. Sometimes it's even a placebo. It's like we just feel better. (laughs) You're like, oh, I've been on these low calories and I've tightened things up. I suddenly feel fantastic. Yeah, It's like you've probably shifted two centimetres in four weeks. And sometimes we shift more, like not saying that's the only way. But when, yeah, when we look at like a short deficit, for somebody going into like a real intentional fat loss phase, it wouldn't really be less than eight weeks. Yeah. So if somebody, yeah, is in that position where it is just a kilo or two or whatever and we just want to tighten things up, I'd more call that a mini cut. And it's the same thing. Yeah. We just kind of like describe it a bit differently. And often when we say mini cut and you're like, wait, it's four weeks, like we can't fuck around in this, people just really switch on. Yeah, legit. I'm the same way. Yeah. What's the other scale of size? So you don't need deficit, you're in maintenance. How long do you say maintenance? Like what's the... How long would you say maintenance before you do it again? Yeah, like, how do you know, okay, I've gone too far or, like, you know what I mean? Like, that makes sense? I feel like I know what you're asking, but, like, if we think about it, like, if we are doing well at maintenance... Just stay there? We haven't gone too far. Yeah, okay, so... Know what I mean? Yeah, so is it, like, like every couple of months do, like, a reset and do it again? Or if you're staying true, just keep going on? Yeah, it's honestly so goal dependent. And it's funny because people often ask this, like, how long should I do this? And then if I do this, what should I do here? And it's like, like I've said a million times, there's absolutely no right or wrong. Like for myself, for the last three years, I literally did like eight months gaining, four months fat loss, eight months gaining, four months fat loss. Like I just went through that rotation. Yeah. And now like this year, I'm like, well, I actually don't want to do either. So I'm going to spend the whole year at maintenance. So there's no right or wrong. It really just comes down to the goal. When I was doing that real intentional loop, my goal was absolutely to build my physique. But if I did like three years of gaining, like I put on 10 kilos in every one of those gaining phases. Imagine if I didn't get it off in between, I'd be like 20 kilos heavier. Like, yeah. So it's yeah like that was just a good system for me there's a bit of a rule that we kind of say in the industry that like ideally you would want to spend three times i don't even know how to word this three times the amount of time out of a deficit as you do in one does that make sense so you're going to spend like three months in one spend nine months out of one yeah okay but that's obviously looking at a person that doesn't need to be in one for health reasons like i said so if somebody is overweight like heavily overweight and needs to lose weight for their health, we don't want them to spend three quarters of their time not working on that. Yeah, okay. Know what I mean? So it's going to be different depending on where you fall on that scale. But if you're somebody that's in a healthy weight range, like your health isn't affected by your weight, then you want to start looking at all these numbers a little bit more closely. Yeah, okay. Can you tell us more about the 10-week program? How many days per week in the training program is in the 10 yeah, I think I know. <laughs> that was two questions and I put them together. Uh, okay, so somebody said, tell us more about the 10-week program. Okay, let's ask that first. Yeah. Well, then the next person I think said, how many days a week is the training program? Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. So we'll answer that um, training program because it's super easy. You can literally pick from three, four or five days a week. Yeah. So once you've signed up, it'll take you through um, when it starts and you literally just click three, four or five days a week. One question answered. Yeah. So it's literally 10 weeks of structured nutrition, structured training. And I think that is so underrated. Like to just have 10 weeks of like, here's your nutrition, here's your training. Like I said, ready, set, go. Yeah. Is freaking awesome. The girls in the January round, I could not speak more highly of those girls. Like they have just killed it. They got access a little bit earlier. Like they got access as of the 1st of Jan and they... Technically, their day one, I think, was the 31st of Jan. 
And this round is going to be the same. So it actually, they're getting access on Easter Monday, but then technically their day one is May 1st. So they get sort of an extra three weeks if they want them, or they could start anywhere in that three weeks. Yeah. Um, and the reason I like to do that is because like, think about January, for example, some people are like, Jan 1st, I want to go for it, <laughs> like New Year's style. But then people are on holidays, like you get people that are like, oh, I'm home on the 5th, I'm home on the 10th, oh, the kids go back on the 26th. Like everyone is so different. So I was like, you can literally start any day you want in Jan and essentially just get a head start and then you've got 10 weeks as of the 31st. So, so many of those girls got started throughout January and they've honestly just killed it. I I could not speak more highly of them. Like I wasn't actually going to run this again in May. Like we were going to have a break and just watching them in the group. The other day I did on my stories, like, um, if you're in this round, let me know your wins. What's been your biggest win? What's been your biggest like realization, whatever. And the responses I got were wild. So good. Really? Yeah. Just so good. Chicks were just like, I've lost seven kilos. It completely changed my mindset. I'm having ice cream every night. <laughs> like one, one girl in the Facebook group the other day was like, I just squatted 77 and a half kilos. It's like, holy yeah, crap. Good. <laughs> so they really are, they've just killed it and it's awesome. It's been so good to watch. So we are running it again. Um, like I said, it'll open up Easter Monday and then it'll start as of May. And you can do nutrition only or you can do nutrition and training. And like I said, it is just 10 weeks of structure. So you get your targets. You can pick fat loss, maintenance, muscle gain or weight gain. You get all of the information. So if it's the cool thing about the 10-week program is like if you are like day one beginner, I have no idea what I'm doing. It's perfect for you. And if you're like, I'm an expert, I just want 10 weeks of structure, give it to me. It's perfect for you as well. So you get all of the like education resources, like everything about flexible dieting, my fitness pal, macros, calories, training, deloads, all of the information. Jesus, give us a juice. You get all the information. You get the so you get a login to my private portal. So that's all in there. You get like a food guide. So literally like if you just click on protein, it has just got hundreds and hundreds of pictures and information about protein sources, fiber, carbs, fats. It's got recipes so you can just tick like breakfast, lunch, dinner. It's got all the meals in there. (laughs) It's just got all of that. And then you get the two example meal plans every week. So you get two example meal plans and you just find the one that's like closest to your calories. So we literally drop in meal plans for like all calories. You find the ones that are closest to your cows. You can follow the meal plan. Some of the girls follow the meal plan to a T. Some girls just take the meal plan, pull what they want from it, and then add their other foods and then obviously you've got all the resources in the portal to do that with like my fitness power flexible dieting all the info um and then the training as well if you opt to do the nutrition and training like i said you can pick three four or five days a week and that's actually a change we've brought in for this round so it used to just be four days a week for everybody but i've brought in three four or five so you can pick same thing you just get 10 weeks of structured training so you get access to my app and it's literally got all the video tutorials. It's got your whole workout there. You literally just hit start now. It takes you through the whole workout. You record your weights, your reps, your sets, every single thing. It's got substitute options. So if it's like lunges and you're like, oh shit, can't do lunges, you literally just hit substitute and it gives you a list of all the other things you can do. You then just hit save when you finish the workout. And then when you go back to gym and work out again, you can see all your old stuff. So you might be like, oh, I leg pressed 50 kilos last week. I'm going to go for 55 this week or whatever. Like it's all in there. Yeah. I think I have said it all. Yeah. It's all, <laughs> it's a lot of information. Yes. So it's, like I said, it's so perfect no matter where you're at. Like when we run other programs, sometimes it's like experienced only or we'll do something for beginners or whatever. But this is just like no matter where you fall, 10 weeks of all the stuff straight away like even now girls that have joined are like what do I do after the 10 weeks we absolutely have options after the 10 weeks so I feel like it's really cool because you can sign up you can do the 10 weeks and then if some chicks are like I've learned everything I need to learn I'm good I'm gonna head off on my own that is awesome I love that equally some girls are like oh I'm loving the training or I'm loving the meal plans or whatever how can I keep on and just keep utilizing those and we've definitely got options for that too how good how good how good you want to sign up <laughs> awkward silence awkward silence there from Shaq so he won't be in there discount shit I think that is all for the 10 week program was that all for the nutrition and training questions 
All right. So that is all for our nutrition and training questions. I hope we answered them all correctly and with enough info for you guys. We are going to be back next week with the part two episode where, like I said, the questions were a little bit more about like kind of like mindset, lifestyle. They were really cool. It was a bit of a mix. So make sure you guys tune in next week because Shaq and I are just going to keep rolling. Mostly it'll be me. I'll be here, guys. Don't you worry. (laughs) I'll keep her on her toes. So we will be back next week.